Hi everyone, it's Kelly from The Hub. I'm here today, as you can see, with Brittany Mellinger, who works at the Lancaster Housing Opportunity Partnership, LHOP for short. Brittany, how are you? I'm doing all right. How are you, Kelly? I'm doing very well. So today's topic is familial status. And I gotta say, didn't think that could be something that matters in the housing world. This is one of those things that we've talked about race, we've talked about ethnicity and you know religion and all those kinds of like groups that are like protected classes. And familial status is one. And I never thought that anybody would care about discriminating against you for familial status. Clearly, it happens. So <laughs> tell us about what it is and how we can look at it from both the tenant and the landlord side. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so familial status is a protected class under fair housing, and it just means uh, if there's the presence of children uh, under the age of 18 that are living in a household, or if a woman is pregnant, or if an adult in the household is seeking to have legal custody of a, of a kid who's under 18. Um, so, you know, back a couple of days, uh, decades ago, you might have seen an advertisement that would say, no pets, no kids. You don't see those anymore, for the most part. You shouldn't see it, uh, those. And if you do, give me a call, because I'd love to know about it. <laughs> right. But That's there, hugely illegal. Are, so. <laughs> yes, yes, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also going to tell you about some other uh, other ways that aren't quite as blatant, uh, that, that still are uh, violations of fair housing um, okay. in regards to familial okay. status. So uh, the first one is is pretty uh, pretty upfront. It's denying housing to a family because they have children. You know, you um, a landlord can't just say, you know, you know what, I don't want any kids in the unit. They'll they'll cause extra wear and tear. They'll be noisy. Uh, the landlord doesn't have the right to discriminate um, and and deny that. Well, let me ask you this. But then, can they charge you extra for like a? cleaning and wear and tear fee and all that kind of stuff. So they're not discriminating against you for bringing you into the unit, but they're going to charge you extra just because you have kids. That's a great question. They, they actually can't do that. Um, you know, that's providing different terms and services to, to a family um, versus what you would do for, um, for a couple of adults without, without children. So, so right, there could be some sloppy well. adults out there. That sure, are absolutely nastier than kids. So yeah, well, good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing uh, that we occasionally hear about is uh, segregating housing. So having uh, certain areas of the property be just for adults and other sections of the building. You know, this is where all the families with kids, you know, they're all on one floor, you know. Um, so folks might try to justify that by saying, you know, kids are noisy, you know, older adults might not want to hear them. Um, but that's, that's not acceptable. Families have the right to live where they would like to live, not in certain sections of a property. Hmm. I, and I could, I could Another absolutely one. see from a landlord's perspective that that would be, that could actually be really common. Like if you've got like mm -hmm. two wings of a building, you know, like a multi-storied, like apartment building, you could have this wing is just for kids and this wing isn't. And yeah, okay, I get that. All right. This is why we yep, got to do that. Everyone's entitled to, to fair housing choice and to live where they feel uh, is best for their family. So that's not for a landlord or a property manager to decide. That's for the family to decide. Um, so no steering. Um, another one that we get a lot of questions about is occupancy standards. Uh, we'll sometimes get questions saying, well, I'm pretty sure my municipality says, uh, you know, just two kids uh, or two people per, uh, per bedroom or a certain amount of square footage. Um, and doesn't HUD have rules about this? Um, so HUD has put out some guidance around this, and they said in general it, it's pretty reasonable to to assume you know two uh, two people per, per bedroom. You know that's that's a, a, a pretty common uh, arrangement, um, but it's not a hard and fast standard. So you really need to look at what's reasonable for the property. If you've got a really small trailer without a whole lot of extra room, you know. You might say, you know, this is a two-bedroom trailer. We can really only have four folks, and that's it. Um, 
but if you've got a large roomy apartment, uh, a really large master bedroom that you could easily have three kids staying in, or say you've got an extra den, something like that, and you could put an extra uh, person in there, then you might say, okay, yeah, we can have five people in this two bedroom unit. So uh, it really should be evaluated on a case by case basis. Um, just looking at the size of the, the unit, um, the capacity of the, the sewer system, the septic system, other building systems, and of course, taking into consideration any state or local zoning laws as well. Mm, so that's something that. that can disproportionately impact families, especially larger families that may have trouble finding uh, units with enough bedrooms. Right, because if you have four kids, Mm -hmm. That now can become really complicated and cost prohibitive. So if you, if you're trying to sort of sneak in all the kids in a smaller place that doesn't really have enough space, according to your municipality, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, you should always be up front, you know, with your landlord, uh, make sure that you put, you know, if they're requesting to know all the names of the inhabitants, make sure you, you list that out, but have that discussion with them. If it's a large unit, you know, um, definitely have a discussion and, and, uh, and a landlord should evaluate that for reasonableness and say, you know what, even though you've got three kids and two adults in this two bedroom unit, you know, in this case, it is reasonable and you can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and rent here. Right, and it could be much more reasonable if they're small kids and like, you know, little kids, and it would mm -hmm. be less reasonable depending if they're teenagers. So sometimes the size mm -hmm. of the kid Absolutely. matters too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, teenage boys, the best. <laughs> so speaking of teenagers, that was uh -huh. a great segue, Kelly. Uh, we often see some rules regarding facilities. So if there's a swimming pool in an apartment complex or a common area, um, you might see, you know, all children under the age of 18 uh, must have parental supervision by the pool. You know, this is a rule that could look like it's coming from uh, from a really uh, well-intentioned place. You know, you don't want kids to be uh, in danger from, from swimming without adult supervision. Um, but you really need to make sure that all of your policies are neutrally stated. Um, you. Uh, there is some case law that held that you can't completely exclude all children under the age of 18 from accessing facilities. You know, uh, you look at the situation, you might have a 17 year old that's a, cer a certified lifeguard, but they could probably swim better than 95% of adults out there. So it's just not reasonable to, to state a rule that would, uh, would say that uh, they're not allowed to, to swim without supervision. Um, and you would always want to make sure that um, that you use objective standards. So like if you've got a, a diving board or something, instead of saying, you know, children under the age of 18 can't use a, a diving board, you could state, you know, the manufacturer of this, uh, of this piece of equipment recommends that only people over the age of 12 be allowed to use this diving board or slide. That could be a reasonable way to state this um, versus saying, um, you know, under the age of 18, absolutely not. Um, and if liability is a concern, you can always uh, have them sign a, a liability waiver um, as a way to, to, to have a reasonable expectation there. Yeah, I was thinking of like those <laughs> like apartment complexes that have like game rooms or like weight rooms and that mm -hmm. and I could see both sides of that argument. Right. If you have a game room that has like ping pong tables and foosball tables and pool tables and all that kind of stuff, but you, you have to be careful about what that means and like how that is. And I could see that kids would totally want to hang out there because how cool is that? So, you, right, there's, there's really about, there's a lot of reasonableness that, that we have to do to make sure that this works for the landlords and the tenants. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. But we want to make sure that parental rules are up to parents and landlord's domains are up to landlords, you, you don't wanna kind of get in the middle of that. So you can obviously have rules of hours of operations, that's fine. Um, like I said, like have uh, use manufacturer standards um, when you're talking about uh, who can and can't use equipment and spaces, but you wanna make sure that everything, uh, all of your policies are mutually stated and don't um, adversely impact families versus, uh, versus other types of tenants. Perfect. Hmm. 
Yeah, so another rule that could impact families um, would be if a, if a landlord would create a gender specific rule that doesn't allow parents and children or male and female children to, to share a bedroom. You know, that's something that a landlord should not do because that's the role of the parent to decide what's best uh, for the sleeping arrangements of their families, not the landlord. So you can't say, you know, only, you know, oh, you've got a 15-year-old daughter and a 16-year-old son, you know, because they're, they're not the same gender, they can't sleep together. That's not a landlord's decision to make. Um, so it, as long as it falls within the, the reasonable occupancy standards that we discussed earlier, um, the landlord shouldn't, uh, should not um, have any interference with that. Hmm. Hmm. I didn't know that people got involved in that. So it's good to know that mm -hmm. it's advisable not to. Yes. Um, one other thing that's helpful to mention, uh, sometimes there are questions about lead paint uh, because we've heard a lot uh, in recent years about the damage that, uh, that having lead paint in an apartment can have to children. Uh, a landlord should not, uh, they cannot deny a family to be able to, to rent a unit with lead paint, but they must fully disclose that that risk is there. Um, okay. So housing built before 1978, there's likely the pres uh, presence of lead paint in a unit. Uh, and then there's a pretty standard packet that, that, uh, that's given out along with a lease signing. Um, so uh, the landlord should let the family know. Um, but it's the parent's decision on whether they would want to, to rent that unit or not. Hmm. Now, in some municipalities, there's uh, lead ordinances that uh, that discuss um, uh, testing and remediation and all of that. Um, I don't know that there's any in Northern Lancaster County, but if you would go to Lancaster City, uh, uh, you would find that. Hmm. So that's uh, that's pretty much all that I have. So um, in short, um, please make sure that your policies are mutually stated and that they don't impact families versus other tenants. Uh, and please ensure that, uh, that your tenants do have um, their housing choice in where they would like to, uh, to raise their families. If you have questions about that uh, from a landlord perspective, reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, or if you're a tenant and feel that you've been uh, impacted in your in your choice of where your family can live, uh, also reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Thank you. We, uh, I say this every single time. I love that there's something that our viewers may never have thought about before, and it could be a hugely impact for others of our viewers out there. So it's good to it's good to learn all the things. Thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. teaching us about how, about familial status. It's wonderful. Of course. Thanks, Kelly. You can reach out to LHAP at any time. They're always here for you. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. See you again. Bye.